Happy April, everybody. This is Stephanie from Apex Languages. No pranks today, just lots of fun grammar. We're going to continue talking about pronouns today, specifically demonstrative pronouns. Which are the demonstratives? It's a short list. This, these, that, and those. Why are they called demonstrative? Well, it's related to the word demonstrate, to show. Demonstratives help you show others what you want. They help you to point. This may not seem important, but if I were traveling in a new country where I didn't speak any of the language, I would try to at least learn the words for hello, thank you, goodbye, and at least one demonstrative pronoun. They're so useful. Imagine, for example, that you're at a restaurant looking at the menu. You could just point at what you want with a finger, but wouldn't that social interaction be so much less awkward that you could also say this, short for I want this please? You get your point across without needing to learn all the extra vocabulary. If you're shopping, similarly, you can point at an item and say that. The next thing to learn would be how much, of course, but that's usually a bit more complicated. Demonstratives allow us to be more specific. They're like the article the, but on a whole new level. Now, before I start talking about demonstrative pronouns, I wanted to review the adjectives first. Both sets are identical. They're just used slightly differently in sentences. Pronouns are nouns and adjectives describe nouns. So if you see this, that, these, or those in front of another noun, you can conclude that you're dealing with a demonstrative adjective, not a pronoun. As I've already said, demonstratives point specific things out. Where they differ from articles is that they focus not only on how specific something is, but also how far away it is from the speaker. Is it here or is it there? Is it near or is it far? For things that are close by, you would use this if it's singular, only one, or if these, if they're plural. This hand, these hands, for example. That and those, again, singular and plural respectively, describe things that are further away. Let's practice uh, repeating them real quick, okay? This, 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 these, these, these that, 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 those, those, those. Near and far are very relative concepts, mind you, because they can change from situation to situation. Something right in your hand should obviously be, be described with this. Something you're pointing at at the opposite side of a large field would require that but in between can be a bit of a gray area. Use whichever feels right, keeping in mind that with this and these, they're a bit more emphatic, stressing the closeness of what you're talking about. That and those can be used a little bit more generally. You have a little bit more freedom with them. Finally, how can you remember which goes with which? That can be confusing for learners because the words are a bit random. First of all, the shorter words with short vowels are singular, and the long ones with their long vowels describe plurals. In many languages, the letter I is pronounced E, so that can help you remember that this and these are meant to go together. That and those have nothing in common, so we throw them out and let them describe things that are far away. I'm not sure if this helps or not, but it's worth a try. Write some other suggestions in the comments and tell me what works for you to tell the demonstratives apart. Now I'm going to try to demonstrate how you use the demonstrative. I like this picture because it allows me to throw in an extra bonus idiom for you. Elephant in the room. The elephant in the room is something that's really big and scary that nobody wants to talk about. Everyone kind of ignores it, even though they know it's there. 
although this is all over the news and uh, politicians are talking about it nonstop, um, in day-to-day -day conversation, coronavirus is a little bit of an elephant in the room right now. When you talk to people, you ask them how they've been, you joke about being stuck at home maybe, but you don't actually talk about the disease and and what it's doing, the possibility of getting sick, the, uh, you know, being out of work and all this other stuff. It's a huge thing. It's changing all of our lives, but it's too scary to really talk about and name it all the time. And so when you're just talking with your friends, it's there. We know it's there, but you don't really... Um, mention it by name, kind of Voldemort, he who must not be named sort of a thing. That's elephant in the room. Now, let's pretend that this is you. You're the guy giving a presentation in a meeting. Well, if this is you, you would say this woman is sitting next to that elephant. This woman, because she's closer to you. That elephant because he's way in the back of the room. You say this man and that man, right? You're using the same word man, and so you need some sort of adjective to describe them. They kind of similar. You could say the man in the blue shirt and the man in the white shirt, um, the man in the front and the man in the back, or you could just say this man, he's right close to you, and that man in the back of the room again. If you're talking about your speech, your pile of papers that you have in your hand, it's these papers. But the papers that are in front of this other guy, now keep in mind, before he was this man, because compared to the man in the back, he's closer. But uh, when you compare the two pieces of paper, the two sheets of paper, these, in his hand are closer, obviously he's touching them, and those in front of uh, that first man there are farther away. This is what I was talking about when I said that this, that, these, those, they're, they're relative concepts, they can change. This man can become that man uh, depending on what you're comparing it to. But there's flexibility. Okay, so it's not the end of the world um, if you get it wrong. Just try to remember this, these, closer, that, those, farther away. This is singular, so this woman. These is plural, so these papers. Some more examples. I have this apple came from that tree okay this apple i have right here but the tree is way up on a hill maybe i'm not even in the same room i brought the apple home and i'm talking about that tree far away okay this apple came from that tree these apples came from those trees now we're going to turn these adjectives into pronouns by just getting rid of the nouns. Now I say these, I'm still referring to these apples, but I'm saving time by just saying these. Now, as with all pronouns, it's very important to make sure that you introduce the apples first. Because if you just say, I like these, you're talking on a phone, nobody can see you, and you say, I like these, they won't have a clue what you're talking about. So make sure you mention the apples first. But once you do, you know, I like these. I have these come from those. <laughs> um, it would be hard to imagine a situation where you'd know those were the, the trees. But, you know, you look at this picture. And you say these, as in these apples, come from those, those trees. There's no noun, so they're not adjective describing nouns, they're pronouns, nouns that are standing on their own. Similarly, this apple comes from that tree. 
this comes from that. So that's the pronoun. Now let's try a mini dialogue. Do you like the ice cream? Now I am saying the. So in this scenario, I'm say the lady who's selling the ice cream to the little girl. I'm right there in this moment. And I'm saying specifically the ice cream that you're eating right now. Do you like it? Do you like the ice cream? She would respond, yes, I like this. This is delicious. It's in her hand. She's eating it right now. But do you like to eat ice cream? Now we've gotten into something that's a bit more metaphorical, something that's not, um, you know, real and happening in this moment. I can't point and say, do you like, you know, eating ice cream, eating ice cream? It's the idea. Do you like the idea of eating ice cream? Okay. And so things, anything that's metaphorical, that's not real and solid, and you can touch it right now, it's in your hand, is going to be generally something that is farther away conceptually. And so you're going to use that. So here's metaphorical. Yes, I like that. That is fun. All right, I'm tired of giving you guys all the answers. I'm going to make you work. Did you enjoy today's video? Of course, the only answer for that is yes, I enjoyed. <gasps> Tell me, should I put this, that, these, or those? I enjoyed this. Presumably, you're still watching it, right? It's in your phone right now or it's on your computer screen. It's very close to you. And so you use this to uh, emphasize that closeness. It's a video. It's singular. So uh, not these. This. Yes, I enjoyed this. Did the sample sentences and pictures help? I hope they did. What would I say? This, these, that, those. I put those, okay, because the sample sentences, well, maybe some, um, you might consider this sample sentences, but I'm thinking about the ones on the previous slides that weren't here, okay, and so because they're a little further away, I use those. Yes, those helped, obviously they're plural, so those. Will practicing every day improve your English? Of course it will, okay, but tell me, should I use this, these, those, or that? Yes, that will, because again, practicing English is a metaphorical idea, and so it's not, even though it's you doing it, you're thinking about it. It's not right here present in the moment, it's something that, it's an idea. And so we use that generally to describe ideas. I hope that did help. Thank you as always for watching. Check out more videos at apexlanguages.com. Have a wonderful, safe, healthy day.